I wonder if any of you know the extent to which animals are being tested on. How many of you have thought or researched about animals and how they're being abused, or as they say, tested? I wonder if uh, how many of you understand just how far animals are being experimented on. Hi, my name is Abia Yasser, and I'm here today to talk about animals and the unfair extent to which they are being tested on. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. I am absolutely terrified of animals, even cats. I know, unbelievable, right? While some people think of cats as cute, fuzzy friends, I think of them as unpredictable monsters with razor-sharp claws and shark-like teeth. So you might think, well, if I'm so scared of animals, then why do I care about them being tested on? Well, the answer is simple. It's because of the immoral ways in which they're being tested. Just because I'm a little scared of animals, it doesn't mean I think they should be cruelly mistreated. Well, you know how I said I'm scared of animals? If I'm scared of an animal that's a tenth of my height, imagine how scared the animal would be of me. Picture this. You're a bunny, and somebody ten times your size comes up to you with a needle that's twice your size. Would you just sit there calmly, or would you be extremely scared? Personally, I would feel intense fear, and I'm sure you would too. So if we, as human beings, would be scared, then so would an innocent little bunny as it stares defenselessly at the sharp needle bearing down upon it. So what everybody should understand by this is that animals also feel fear. Immense fear. How is it that we can knowingly hurt and terrify these poor creatures sometimes just for our cosmetic gain? Did you know that in the U.S. over 160,000 animals are being tested on each year for cosmetics? Atrocious, right? What's even more atrocious is that those 160,000 animals are only being used in the cosmetics industry. In the scientific community, however, the number of animals, not just rabbits, that are being tested on each year rises to one, uh, over 115 million each year. In the cosmetics industry, animals are being used to test things like cosmetic surgery and eye irritation tests, where chemicals are dripped into or rubbed onto the skin and eye of animals, often without any pain relief. Additionally, experiments with new make, uh, makeup, shampoos, and mascaras are where uh, animals are being injected with things like paints, dyes, and chemicals, and are often killed without hesitation. Unfortunately, 97% of all animals that are used for testing die during testing. Well, if we remind ourselves that 115 million animals are being used each year for science, well, then that means that 110 million animals die each year in the name of science. Clearly, a lot of animals die in the name of science. However, with science and technology progressing each day, humanity will be able to come up with new ways to move away from uh, animal testing. For example, in vitro testing. This is where scientists use biochemical or cell-based systems instead of cute little animals. Scientists have successfully used in vitro methods to identify eye irritants and diseases that cause allergic contact dermatitis. Scientists have also started using miniature human organs. Some things that work in mice don't work so well in humans, and vice versa. So why not spare the bunnies and work on lab-grown human organs instead? These new non-animal-based methods are also significantly cheaper as the upkeep for feeding and storing the animals is eliminated, meaning that companies will actually save money in moving away from animal testing. Fortunately, the scientific community is too slow in moving away from animal testing. Why? Is the scientific community dragging its feet over this? Don't they realize that we have to move a lot uh, faster or else millions of animals are going to continue to lose their lives? Clearly, the use of animals in scientific testing is a controversial topic. However, uh, sorry, and the evidence overwhelmingly suggests that it is an unreliable and unnecessary practice. We must continue to advocate for the development and use of new non-animal uh, testing methods. Thank you for listening.